Poor weather and the public holiday for Queen Elizabeth's Jubilee pushed the UK deeper into recession. GDP shrank by a sharper than expected 0.7% in the second quarter. Britain's policymakers are coming under increasing pressure. The IMF says the government and the Bank of England will have to think again if there's no improvement. Well, let's get some details from Joe Grice, Chief Economist at the Office for National Statistics. Joe, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Um, So the sharpest fall since Q1 2009, but there are some mitigating circumstances. Can you in any way quantify the effect of the weather and and the Queen's Jubilee yet? We can't quantify the effect. Um, uh, It's it's reasonably clear on the basis of what's happened on previous occasions that the changes to the bank holiday pattern uh, in the second quarter will have had an impact. If you remember, there was a uh, the late May, May bank holiday was moved into June, and then there was an additional bank holiday as well for the for the Diamond Jubilee celebrations. Uh, we have some information about what happened similarly in the, and in the gold of Jubilee. Took the whole so, week off as well. And so some people may well have taken the whole week off. In other cases, it may have worked in the opposite direction. And obviously, you know, no one will be need reminding this was a period of pretty awful weather. OK, well, let's drill down a little bit into the numbers. The service sector, which is three quarters of the economy, grew mm. in the first quarter, but fell 0.1% in the second. Is there evidence that the recovery, what there was of it, has completely stalled? Well, within that um, small fold of 0.1% in services, actually, there was quite disparate uh, um, uh, behaviour in the various sectors. Uh, advertising, for example, grew by 5%. Uh, Office services, administrative office services, fell by nearly 5%. Uh, Interestingly, actually, government uh, uh, services rose 0.3%, and health was important there. That rose by 0.8%. One of the headline numbers I spotted, construction, small Mm. part of the economy, less than 8%, but down 5.2%. Is this weather-related? Can can you attribute it it to that? It may well be weather-related. A lot of that uh, appears to have happened in June. Uh, We have got about 2,000 returns still uh, far from full information for June, but that was notably weak. And now that sort of squares with what the, the industry itself seems to be saying, uh, where there is a feeling in the, in the trade press uh, that actually things are pretty bleak. Okay. But the, obviously you can't make cement during when, it, when it's pouring. Uh, let's get a view quickly from uh, what the, the Chancellor, George Osborne, had to say in terms of uh, no excuses. Let's hear from him. Of course there are one-off factors like the bank holiday, but that's not an excuse that I'm using. Uh, the frank, frankly, even without that, these would be disappointing numbers. And I think they just remind us that Britain has some deep-rooted economic problems that are going to take time to solve. We've also got the debt crisis abroad. And, and all of these things, of course, make it a big challenge for our country. Well, that was the reaction from the Chancellor, George Osborne. But let's look ahead I mean, to the revisions, because that's clearly mm. always very important. But usually it's only up or down 0.1%. So, so no great hope there. We normally quote actually about 0.2% at this stage in either direction. And actually, it is worth saying that these figures are more uncertain than usual, uh, partly because that bank holiday pattern makes life a little bit more difficult for us in estimating the, uh, the figures, uh, partly because... Um, a lot of the action probably took place in the in the third month, and that's the the quarter that's always the, the month that's always most difficult for us because it's where we have least hard information. Uh, actually, we published today a paper uh, which sets out the evidence we've got for the third quarter for the special effects uh, and the judgments we made against that. So it's all there as transparently as we can. But it is a difficult uh, uh, quarter to estimate for that reason, and probably the margins of error therefore are a bit bigger than the point two we'd normally quote. OK, so we'll, we'll cling on to some optimism. Uh, but, but in terms of the measures that are being taken, the Bank of England is pumping billions into the economy, companies allegedly sitting on huge cash piles, but households still completely cash-strapped. I mean, statistically, can we see any evidence of, of the measures that are being taken by the Bank of England and, and the government actually working, flowing through? Well, it's very interesting, actually, to look at the, the way the household finances are looking at the balance sheets for the rest of the sector, actually, uh, for the rest of the sectors. Uh, and actually, one of the lessons probably from the crisis is that we didn't pay enough attention to what was happening to the balance sheets of the various sectors. Uh, the household sector, I think, has recovered its balance sheet to a degree, but probably there's still some further further progress to be made. And the general view was, until today's numbers, that the economy would return to growth in the third quarter. I mean, obviously you get an Olympic boost, but that would have to be enormous for that to take place, for that scale of recovery to take place, wouldn't it? Well, um, the third quarter, you know, we'll see. Uh, that's for the future, and that's we're not in the prediction game. Uh, on the other hand, we've clearly had a, a pretty disappointing first half of the year, so indeed to get into positive territory for the year as a whole, we would have to have a, a significant recovery in both Q3 and Q4. 
whether that happens, of course, we, we, we wait and see. And it's only a few days since the IMF forecast plus 0.2% uh, for the year for GDP for this country, and we're currently at minus 08 Again, does that fit with all the models that, that, that you see in terms of forecasting or beginning to see the signs of a recovery? Well, as I say, the forecasting, you'd have to ask someone other than me. We, right. we don't stay into that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but clearly, it is a, it's a difficult background uh, for, um, for the rest of the year. OK, Joe, thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, my thanks there to Joe Grice of the Office for National Statistics. There's more from us at Reuters.com. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Reuters Insider. I'm Nigel Stevenson. This is Reuters.